वेल हेलो एंड वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ किताबी बातें आई एम अभिषेक आल्सो नोन एज बुक्स वाले भैया माय गेस्ट टुडे इज थ्रिलर ऑथर जिक्स अशर एंड दिस इज हिज लेटेस्ट बुक द कैबिनेट कंस्पिरेसी व्हिच केम आउट ओनली रिसेंटली एंड लाइक ऑल ऑफ हिज अदर बुक्स आई एंजॉयड रीडिंग दिस वन एज वेल एंड इट्स अनदर बुक इन व्हिच जिक्स कीप यू यू नो गेसिंग टिल द एंड एंड इन द एंड यू रियलाइज दैट व्हाट यू थॉट वाज नॉट हाउ इट वाज एंड यू वर रॉन्ग सो जिक्स कंग्रेचुलेशंस ऑन द द बुक थैंक यू ऑफ कोर्स A pleasure to have you here on the podcast. Thank you so much, Abhishek, and it's a real pleasure to be here. And uh, yes, thank you for your kind words uh, about the book. Uh, and I'm sure we'll, you know, discuss it uh, in this session. And I'm sure the viewers will find it very useful. Absolutely. So before we start, a very brief introduction about Jix. Jix debuted with his novels Insomnia and A Brutal Hand in 2020. is also the author of award winning short stories the way it is killing make up in india and duel jigs loves writing fast paced thrillers blending real events and personalities in his stories a former banker with ends at grindley's bank and hsbc in our consults with the world bank and execution a leadership consulting firm jigs is also an avid marathon runner and plays the guitar in his free time great so uh my first question jigs to is actually related to your profession a former banker with the very reputed banks so how you moved into uh, writing so i uh, you know i started my career before banking in it uh, immediately after my engineering i was with the tata group uh, in software uh, but after my b school for 19 years i was with uh, mostly with hsbc uh, which is a leading mnc bank um but after some time you know i i realized that uh, i probably there is much more to life than just being a part of a corporate although i had absolutely no complaints uh, with the organization it's a great place to work right so i knew that uh, if i move out it will only be to pursue something which i love and at that point in right. time and still now thankfully it continues to be writing which is like a passion now so uh, 2017 um i was feeling very restless you know and uh, around the same time uh, thanks to my wife vidya right uh, she told me that why don't you give writing a shot because i had you know some uh, in 2016 or i was kind of wo bolte hai na ke you throw some things in the universe and it could happen and all that right yes but i i just wanted some external pressure on me so i i started saying that oh i want to write a novel uh, told a couple of friends etc right so then uh, vidya told me why don't you do this and somewhere she heard about uh, a creative writing course which uh, zaviers in mumbai conducts and it is a after office kind of a 6:30 to 9 kind of a course for 9 weeks right she said why don't you do this anyway it's after office kar lo office ke bagal mein hai right so i started that and uh, i really enjoyed that and uh, there i received a lot of encouragement from uh, the professor there right uh, and she told me because we had to make you know weekly submissions and while we are in the class we had to write something you know so yeah. she said i do see some spark so don't give it up uh, you know after the course pursue karna kuch and uh, so that was quite encouraging around the same time there was uh, unfortunately it has not happened for the last 2 uh, 3 years but there used to be a national uh, level short story writing competition yeah. called write india which was yes. sponsored by the times of india and uh, every month there is a very famous author who gives a prompt in terms of you know a line or a couple of lines and in around 3000 words you have to write a write a story and submit so one of my favorite authors of all time as you know for all thriller writers uh, across the world has been jeffrey archer yeah. and uh, i think it was september of 2017 when jeffrey archer was the author of the month and one okay. fine day yeah. times of india front page full page jeffrey archer has given a prompt and i said okay mai i am anyway pursuing a writing course so i submitted a novel uh, a short story which was uh, the weight is killing and uh, to my delight uh, and and surprise at that time i won right and that was like oh, a wonderful. big big fanboy moment yeah. for me because yeah. you know, being adjudged a winner by jeffrey archer was fabulous um around the same time the next month i participated again in write india that time the judge was ms shobha day 
again i won oh, okay. uh, which was the story makeup in india um so that in a way kind of triggered um uh, you know my writing journey and uh, i know it's you know for any author to be published uh, it's it can be a real struggle uh, but coincidentally fortunately uh, ravi supramanyam read my thriller short story the weight is killing and one fine day he called me and he said jigs i read uh, the story of yours i really liked it and i am working with uh, a big publishing house westland publications right which is an amazon group company yeah. uh, to give new authors a chance to write and debut with thriller novels so would you like to write a thriller novel and i said matlab you know hindi mein jaise kehte hain neki aur puch puch bilkul i will yes, write it of course so then ravi said okay uh, in a month's time come with some ideas to my office and we'll discuss it so i within 2 3 weeks i went with three ideas uh, he loved two of them which then translated into insomnia and a brutal hand right so and then um, with all these things happening uh, in around 7 8 months time i thought it's it's time to pursue this uh, in a more serious yeah. manner so yeah. i moved out of my full time corporate job uh, joined the world bank as a consultant which i still consult uh so yeah it gives me the flexibility gives me the time and uh, yeah i am enjoying this this phase of my life great so when you started with ravi i think that was the first published books which are these to the brutal hand and insomnia if i am not wrong these were first published works so That's how right. was the experience uh, partnering with ravi and how much time from starting to Uh, publication how much time did it take I so uh, these books came out together if i'm not wrong that was uh, unintentional actually abhishek uh, okay insomnia was supposed to release first so we started uh, we in a way agreed and he liked the story ideas which was in early 2018 uh, and finally the you know i finished writing both the drafts by mid 2019 in a year's time both the books were ready Uh, and then we were kind of deciding on you know the cover design and the uh, titles and all that right and unfortunately then uh, covid struck so yeah. as as per plan uh, insomnia was supposed to be the first release and a uh, brutal hand would have been phased out by maybe 3 6 months after that uh, but then we waited for a bit that you know things will ease and will launch it physically etc but uh, the end of covid or when things would open up right was nowhere yeah. in sight and then we said okay anyway sab kuch digital hai to let's launch both of them together yeah so then both were released together in september 2020 so yeah a couple right. of years there about from start to finish and and how was as you were with ravi at that time and how was the general response from the publishers because uh, you already as you said you had won a few you know contest and also you had a you had some pedigree to talk about so i'm sure when you would have approached publisher you were not someone who was completely new to the world of writing is uh, you had this uh, awards and also how was the response to the publisher how difficult was it to sell this idea of you know you writing for the first time and writing in this genre how was that experience so that was uh, the first two insomnia and a brutal land was uh, there was no effort i can say that it was pretty easy mm-hmm. right because uh, the publisher westland uh, books as well as uh, ravi right together they had anyway partnered um to launch something called shorts s h o r t z right yes. uh, which were these novellas so around yeah. 130 150 pages and give uh, an opportunity to new authors so that way it wasn't difficult uh, westland also read my short story read my ideas that i had in terms of a brief structure of the story and the outline that i had for insomnia and the brutal hand and they like the idea so that wasn't too difficult um so i would say i was uh, very fortunate in that that sense yes. okay so uh, i'll come to your uh, latest book now the cabinet conspiracy and as i said it kept me guessing uh, t- till the very end i see your book covers you know geopolitics covers uh, national politics and as well as you know on this genre of uh, you know thriller and you know mystery how do you weave all of this together i mean as a writer do you find it difficult you are clubbing you know politics your politics murder mystery everything uh, human emotions you know with the inspector's wife you know uh, being suspected of uh, cancer and you know 
weaving so many emotions and plots together how, how do you do that and how difficult you find to do that so uh, it is uh, challenging i would say not difficult uh, but uh, this is uh, once you know that this is the story you want to tell right in whatever format yeah. it is um then you just work towards ensuring that you resolve and bring all the elements together weave everything together and it is uh, uh you know at a certain pace that you want to present as a thriller because the ultimately with all these elements the book is a thriller that is what it is meant to yeah. be yeah. so the pace the the mystery as you said uh, an element of suspense which is there those are the critical points uh, uh in any any story right uh and interestingly uh, whatever book i write including the cabinet conspiracy i i clearly have the classical three acts in mind right yes. that these are this is the way the story will be told so once the so for the cabinet conspiracy the initial plotting uh and and as you have read it there are a lot of real events yes. which i have woven into the book right so there is yeah. the belt and road initiative there is the assassination of alexander litwin and co there is uh, a a reference to jamal khashoggi's killing in the, in the istanbul consulate where you know i have taken that there is a chocolate bomb which was supposed to be used in the second world war etc right so bringing all these elements together as a part of the storyline uh, so the pre work was a lot more challenging and interesting right uh so i started thinking of this for the first time in uh early 2018 when the idea came to my mind right and the book finally released in december 23 so it took around yeah. 5 plus years plus from years. just the fruition of the idea till the publication of the book so right. yes i did take my time doing research uh, ensuring that there are no loose ends everything is covered and yet the output is crisp and thrilling for the reader so that was the interesting and challenging part right i i remember when i read and coincidentally my wife offered me a chocolate during that time only i was like hey bang <laughs> on wait a minute because coincidentally a couple of months back i read a hindi novel in which also there was poison within the chocolate so I like uh, hang on i i am not sure if i'll be having it this moment but yeah uh, so, so yeah the, as you said jio wallet yeah no just on the chocolate bit right so uh, one of the characters and i uh, i mean of course you have read the book but i'll not spoil it for the other viewers so the i wanted to have a very novel way uh, yeah. in which one of the characters is killed right uh, and there is of course the book is about the assassination of the indian prime minister and there is an assassin who's hired right uh, who's who who goes about doing her job so yeah it's a lady assassin who goes about doing her job through the book and i yeah. wanted a very new way right and then uh, i had thought of a couple of other ways in which the killing happens but then i read about the chocolate bomb you know somewhere coincidentally so actually the the slight history on this is that the nazis during the second world war uh, had devised the chocolate bomb to okay. kill winston churchill Oh, okay and uh, at somehow they never went through with the uh, assassination it was aborted in its planning stage for whatever reason uh, but i thought hey this is like a literally a killer idea you know and so i yeah. incorporated that but yeah please abhishek you should please go ahead and have that chocolate not not i, I will now <laughs> i will now, of course so uh, and another thing i noticed in the book so see in in any novel we see the focus is either on characters you do a lot of you know uh, work to make your characters work and at times you know when you especially writing a series so you are identifying them through certain characters and then of course there is this plot in this particular book i saw more focus on on the plot the way i looked at it so how do you plan to uh, write in the future you want to keep the plot you know such that you know readers Just you know, get hooked to it, or you want to develop more and more characters, say with the same set of inspectors or the police force or anything. How how you plan to? And what was the intention behind this one? You wanted to focus more on the plot, or on you know making it gripping, or it happened this way. See, uh, for me, Abhishek, the the hero of the story is always the story itself, right? The the plot yeah. which is there. Of course. So 
that is what I had uh, primarily in mind. And yeah. so the way I uh, write is it, it probably it defines whether it is going to be the plot or the character or yeah. both, etc. Right. So I, I it starts for me. Uh, any new novel starts with a very creative, a very artistic kind of an idea, right? That. So when I read about the Belt and Road Initiative and I realized how important it is to China, uh, and these are real events, right? It's actually true even yeah. today. And yeah. that India has not signed up and India is a critical link and China is upset, yes. India is upset. And I said, okay, why not? Uh, would How far would China go, right? Would China go to the extent of assassinating the Indian Prime Minister? And that's, that's where fiction took over, right? Um, so, yes, it starts with a very creative artistic thing uh, then i actually plot or write down who are the main characters so there is a prime minister and there is a uh, an assassin naturally who will try to kill the prime minister there are some masterminds behind and there is someone who will try and uh, solve the mystery or foil the plot right so once all these lead characters were uh, in my head i put them on paper uh, and then i actually start writing a chapter summary Right. So it's just three, four lines for every chapter. And once I've written that, so 50, 55 chapters, four, five lines each. So then I know that within these 200, 250 lines, am I telling the story that I want to tell? Uh, and it becomes a bit easier because it's like a summary of the novel. Uh, and then I know that if there are, there are any loopholes or if there are any characters um, who are absent in the book for a long time, will the reader forget? Etc. Right. So once all that is balanced out, then a real process then takes over, right? Uh, where right. I then start writing the detailed chapters. So right. yeah, I think all these development of the story and the characters happens in the pre-work stage. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it at least in my head, or, or so far whatever I've written, three I've written. I'm writing three more. Uh, it's always okay. a, a good balance between the story and the characters who will narrate the story, right? Who will take the story forward. So, right. Yeah. So in the novel is the PM is completing his two very successful terms. And here in India, Prime Minister Modi is completing his two successful terms. And he is very likely to, you know, uh, come up for the third time as well. In any way, is the timings in relation, is this intended that, you know, timing with the general elections approaching and maybe, you know, you plan to keep it this only that before the elections, you know, just to coincide with the elections. So was it planned in some way, or maybe you have plans to gift a copy to Prime Minister Modi that you know, <laughs> so as you know, so the two terms, why not you uh, read this? I would, I would, I would love to give it to uh, give a copy to uh, Shri Narendra Modi. Uh, so yes, in a way, it is intention. Uh, as you rightly said, you know, the Prime Minister in the book, uh, Mahendra Doshi. Yes. Uh, has complete has one has one two terms is the ex chief minister of gujarat uh, has a strong is a very popular figure in india and yeah. overseas very strong leader etc right so uh, definitely uh, uh, in a way i would say intentional uh, uh, comparison to mr modi and the reason for that is that uh, my book is a very topical uh, it's not all fiction because I'm actually taking real events like the India-China conflict, uh, uh, you know, things that happened in Russia. There are a lot of real events, uh, the right. Mumbai marathon, which happens, right? Which all the all yeah. these are real things. So when I have these uh, real events, I could not have an Indian prime minister who's a central figure in my book, who's very different from uh, Shri Modi, right? Otherwise, readers would say, hey, I mean, I can't relate to this prime minister who's so different than Mr. Modi, right? So I wanted to make it very relatable to the readers. Uh, so yes, partly it was, I would say when I was writing, it was completely intentional. Uh, and then when the book was ready, we had the cover ready, the publishers were waiting. Uh, and actually another book which will release now, uh, probably in the second half of 2024, was supposed to be my third release. But then we right. said, you know, the timing is great. It's before the elections where the novel is set. So then we thought, okay, why don't we release the cabinet conspiracy first so yes coincidental but also intentional so i hope the next book is not going to be titled something like the saffron conspiracy or anything like, like that we're not <laughs> sure. going to disclose the name but 
that 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 could very well be no 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 it's it's actually a true crime story uh ah, okay which is, yeah so that should that that's ready with another leading publisher and uh, should should release soon great so okay i i won't have any spoiler but when i read the last page so this intrigued me so i have a simple question uh is the next book going to be some sort of sequel of this i read the last page i, I realized this that could be so is there any such plan you may write something you know which takes maybe this story forward in some way or the other or you plan to write something completely different so uh currently uh my hands are full with uh, three books at various stages so one is as i mentioned is ready one is kind of half written one is uh as i was mentioning the chapters right so all the chapters etc already uh, written and all three are kind of commissioned by leading publishers uh but yes uh if i find so this you know the plot to assassin the indian prime minister yeah the big real conflict of the bri uh china being a big adversary a formidable adversary to india yes. uh, are very very strong uh, plot points for a for a very compelling story right so if i do find something which is as compelling uh then sure i would i would kind of blend it and write a sequel keeping some of the characters the same um but but yeah so i'm open to it but i don't have any idea right now of what it could right. be and as you you know took a cue from the geopolitical events and the indian political scenario how much do you think typically uh, for a fiction writer because this is all fiction you're talking about how much the environment or you know the situation or whether it's economy whether it's politics or anything how much it affects and and you know an author's thinking because as it is you know in some way uh, derived from the the happenings bri initiative is is, is there china's dominance and china's uh, ambitions how much you you think typically for a novelist uh, the real world is you know reflected in in fiction because on them they may be writing different things some talk of you know that dystopian future and all that but in some way or the other it is uh, happening you know its inspiration is the the current scenario how much you think happens for a novelist and how much uh, for you so i think uh, it's a very fascinating area uh where as you mentioned you know if you are writing about a dystopian future or if you are writing about some fantasy or harry potter etc then there there could not be any and there need not be any uh, relation to real events of yes. what's happening in the yes. current world but i think anything other than that if even if it is fiction uh i think important is that uh, the story has to appeal to and the reader has to find it very relatable right Yes, yes this is okay. this is this is plausible aise ho sakta hai uh and i have seen this happening ye hua tha aise kuch hua tha so <clears throat> they are able to link the plot points they are able to connect the dots uh, much better so at least for me uh even if i'm writing fiction so even the next uh, one of the books that i'm writing is uh because i have so much experience in the financial world right so i am writing about financial crime how intricately it is linked to terrorism uh, there is money laundering there are sanctions and uh, i believe that uh, you know if the flow of money is stopped uh, which is funding to any terrorist <clears throat> excuse yeah. me any terrorist organization you can theoretically get rid of terror right but right. but but you can't there are loopholes and there are brokers and agents and how money is laundered right so these are real things which are happening now blending it into a fictional story um makes it just more just more fascinating right which is absolutely uh, i think i think somewhere it is termed as faction right which is a blend of facts and fiction so i think that that's always more fascinating especially for me so in this novel and as happens in any you know murder mysteries you have to ultimately zero in on you know one person who is the uh, the killer or the murderer how difficult do you find that i i remember one of the conversations i had i uh, saw it in youtube in which the hindi crime fiction writer sundar mohan pathak ji he said that you know uh, the problem with a crime a murder mystery is that there are five six seven key characters and you have to ultimately choose from one of them 
Because you can't have right. someone told which is not heard of in the in the novel, and you say, "Oh, someone Correct. just came in, you know, and say he's the murderer." So that that's a real challenge. So how much of a challenge you think that is for for a writer? Because ultimately, you choose from them. You have introduced them at some point or the other in the novel. But how difficult that is to choosing, you know, who should be the one, and you know, then right, uh, you know, making the plot accordingly. I think uh, Abhishek, the challenge is not in choosing who's the killer, right? Because वो तो आपका काम novel शुरू होने के पहले हो गया है, right? You have already written the story, so when I have written the plot itself, I know. So even in my working notes, which old-fashioned way I write it with a pen and paper, if I yeah. take out that diary for cabinet conspiracy, I would have addressed the the killer, the serpent, as he's called uh, in the book. as the killer before i gave the okay. name serpent so that is already in my head or in any author's head that this is the killer i think the real challenge comes at least for me is when i'm writing in detail and i know that these other five six characters are not the killers and this right. one is but right. what i'm writing has to be very neutral when i write in detail right there is no right. word nothing should slip out when i'm writing because Absolutely. now i have a bias because i know that he is the killer so when okay. i am writing and the others are not killers i can't write that they are nothing should slip that they are innocent and nothing should slip here that he is the killer that is the real challenge to my mind absolutely because if you apne pehle hi hint de diya to it will be very easy for right. anyone to figure out and that, that the whole thrill goes if you can correct, figure out correct correct that's right that's that's true awesome so uh This is your, as you said, your third published work, and uh, you have more on on the platter. So, uh, what advice you want to give to you know aspiring writers? See, uh, my advice would be that uh, you know many times, and even when I was uh, in the corporate world before pre-writing, right? It's always uh, one always feels and believes that uh, I'm very busy. Time nahi hai. uh you know and and some somehow your work your business uh becomes your life right but it's only a part of your life that is what you have to understand and True. and a lot of times uh, including me i was also guilty of that you just wait for the perfect time that yes. jab mere paas 15 din kuch nahi hoga karne ko tabhi i will you know i will either learn this music or i will learn singing i will write i will join the drama class or i'll go skiing whatever it is you want to do yeah. but that never happens you know you are never going to get 15 full oh, free days din kabhi aate nahi true correct so my advice would be that uh, to aspiring writers specifically that write every day uh don't spend too much time thinking and this was an exercise we actually did in the course mm-hmm. just pick a pen and paper start writing on anything right just see around the room and you can see the you know the the bookshelf uh, which is designed very differently when you see abhishek right behind abhishek so write on that right uh, write on maybe the lighting in my room just start writing it can be anything right and right. and just start writing give 15 minutes at least every day to whatever your passion is and and trust me things will happen great i think that's some definite good advice and wanted to ask in this particular genre how you think this thriller genre as such is is doing in india and what's the future you see for thriller writing so one is uh, if i look at only the readers right uh, the current readers or the reader base in india or wherever right globally also unfortunately that has been shrinking over yeah. the last many years right like i remember when you know my generation or maybe even the generation after me we were growing up uh kuch karne ko tha nahi so we were just reading right uh, yeah now i think uh, especially amongst the younger lot they have too many options to do too many things and the uh, it's we are all you know let's face it we are living in the age of instant gratification attention spans are very poor very uh good. you need patience and you need that commitment to start and finish a book uh 
so that in a way is going down not only for the thriller genre but for all genres all books but the good part i see now uh, as a silver lining is content is becoming king if i look at yes. everywhere and uh, a good book good content is a good subject a good story is much in demand not only i mean if you while the reader base is shrinking but there are other avenues where content is in demand right because there are yeah. ott platforms and there there yes. could be multiple screen adaptations etc so there are in a way a, a new reader segment which is developing yes. right so that is heartening and i believe that once people get used to good better content and they want something new i think people will also return or there'll be to reading or there'll be new readers who will who will form right so yeah it's it's heartening um challenging but heartening and fingers crossed i think this is the comment i have heard from many authors that reading as a skill is is a dying skill and you rightly mentioned attention spans are you know uh, uh, very low and this is the era of you know the shorts you can say you instagram right. shorts or youtube shorts that's what people spend most of their time on but yes the silver lining is definitely ott and uh, let's let's hope that ott actually leads to a you know the revival of you know reading people getting fascinated by the uh, plot and you know they move back to uh, books which is i think you know because the youtube generation it feels like you know bahut vela time hai spend too much time on uh, on no, that's to that content which is not of much use True. very few videos i would say are you know of really of much use the rest all is not something is doing any value add i would i would anyway prefer a a book say compared to a, a Absolutely. You know, youtube video which is not doing yes. information uh, but yeah let, let's hope that you know we have more and more authors you know who are writing excellent uh, story especially people like me who love reading thrillers and uh, so it was wonderful talking to you jix and uh, uh, best of luck for all your you know future books and just Thank one you. thing left is that the your books uh, don't have a signed copy so whenever you get a chance to visit delhi you know uh, we will be meeting and i'll be getting it signed it will be my pleasure abhishek uh, i do as i mentioned my daughter works there so i do keep coming there next time when i'm there i'll give you a shout and it'll be my sure. pleasure to give you a signed copy and thank you so much for hosting me uh, and having me in your show it's been a real pleasure and uh, thank you very much thank you and all those who are watching i strongly recommend this book if you are on the uh, lookout for a great thriller yes it will keep you guessing till the end and i'm very sure you will be proven wrong uh, when you read you know what exactly happened thanks jix yes, it was I, a pleasure talking to you i obviously second that it's a book that uh, you will enjoy so do pick it up it's available online as well as at all leading bookstores thank you